Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today we're going to be competing in a qualifier play-in best of three for OTJ um, for the last chance to try to make it into the qualifier weekend tomorrow. So if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. There will be a deck list here in the description, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg. And then in addition, there will also be a link to all of my playlists, for, both for constructed and limited content. Um, I will also include a link to um, one of uh, Paulo Vito Damodarosa's videos, uh, specifically on building sealed deck, which I think is really valuable and definitely um, affected me for this uh, this sealed event here. So I did actually open the cards here just a little earlier today, so I didn't get a chance to open them here on camera, but I do have it saved and we'll take a look at the sealed pool. Um, very excited. So first of all, I do want to give a big shout out here to my members. Thank you so much for be becoming members of my channel. It really do appreciate it and it's a great way to help support the channel. If you are considering becoming a member, you will get early access to my content for as little as $1.99 a month. So if you want to consider that, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. So this was a pretty strong pool. Um, this was kind of the first list I ended up putting together here, but I'll show you all the cards. So we ended up opening Double Bonnie Paul, which is totally insane, um, as well as Overwhelming Forces and uh, Rush of Dread. So some really, really powerful cards. And I ended up putting together kind of two builds that I think sort of made the most sense. So if you end up watching Paolo Vito's um, video on Sealed, he really focuses on power over consistency. So a lot of times in draft, you do want to build a very um, synergistic deck and that you are rewarded for doing so. But in Sealed, you kind of have to just have the best cards available because everyone else is going to be having just tons and tons of bombs. And because you have so many rares that you are opening, you have access to a lot more cards than you normally would in a draft. So with that in mind, he recommends um, try to make your deck as bomb heavy as possible and have as much removal as possible. And I really, um, I do greatly respect uh, PV. I think he's, uh, you know, previous world champion, definitely knows what he's talking about. So we're gonna be trying to do that here for this sealed deck. So here's the pool. Let's take a look at it. Um, we have, for the white was a little weak here. Um, we do have notably Prosperity Tycoon, which is pretty powerful. Um, and it is one of the cards I considered splashing in one of the builds. Journey to Nowhere is another really great removal spell. And then we have Annie Joins Up, um, which is five damage, sort of a nice removal, as well as some potential triggers here. In addition, we've got Fortune Loyal Steed. So those are kind of the ones that jump out at me. Um, Frontier Seeker is also good if you decide to go main white, but that's kind of what I'm seeing here in white. Um, in blue, we ended up seeing a pretty weak set of cards with the exception here of Double Bonnie Paul, which is totally stupid. And we'll definitely be slamming both of these in either build. Um, the other cards that kind of jump out to me after Bonnie Paul is really just Jailbreak Scheme being a really nice uh, removal and uh, trick. Failed forwarding is not terribly exciting. Um, you need to have the right deck to have Emergent Haunting. The other powerful card here is Slickshot Lockpicker. So this is another really good card. And those are the cards that kind of jumped out in blue. In black, we have Blood Hustler, Desperate Blood Seeker. Um, we have Rattleback Apothecary. It's sort of a nice mid-range creature with Death Touch. 
And then we also opened Overwhelming Forces, which is, I think, the highest win rate of any card in the set um, in draft, or at least it's very close between that and Bonnie Paul, so why not run both? Um, and then also Rush of Dread, which is super powerful. Um, both of these, I think, have win rates north of 60%, possibly as close as 65% or above. Um, other powerful cards here, we have Badlands Revival. Nice way to kind of recur those Bonnie Pauls. And then Rictus Robber for like a nice value card. And that's about it for black. For red, we have Terror of the Peaks, which has a win rate around 59 to 60%. Very, very powerful. You can kind of get it going. Um, otherwise, we have some nice cards here. We've got Legion Extruder for nice cheap removal. Discerning Peddler for selection. Prickly Pear, just a little bit of a value card. Cactus Foot Sure Shot which is great for the four power creatures. And then we have Savage Smash for removal. Annie joins up. Uh, Trick Shot, which is kind of an expensive removal, but it is, I think, a lot better in sealed because of all the insane bombs flying around. And then we have uh, Roadrunner's okay. And Demonic Ruckus is also a decent card. And then Form a Posse um, is another possible value card here. For green, we have, again, Double Body Paul, Annie Joins Up, Cactus Folk Sure Shot, Savage Smash, Badlands Revival. We already talked about all these. We also have Primal Might, Spinewoods Armadillo, um, Bristleback, Sentry, Snakeskin Veil, Double Throw from the Saddle, and then Drover Grizzly, Tumbleweed Rising, uh, Outcaster Trailblazer, and Free Strider Commando. So um, we have very decent green here. For our artifacts, we have some really nice filter lands. We have three Conduit Pylons and two Mirage Mesas. And then we have a Silver Deputy, which is usually a very bad card, but if you're gonna go three or four color, you might just run it. Uh, Gold Pan, potentially, also to help fix. And then I'm not really excited about these other cards here. And let's take a look at the gold cards. We have um, some nice lands here. We've got Abraded Bluffs, Inspiring Vantage, Jagged Barons, and Festering Gulch. And then again, we have kind of the gold cards we already talked about. So these are kind of the two builds that I ended up with from these two piles, from these piles here. So my first build was just the straight kind of Sultai deck that runs um, two copies of Bonnie Paul, Overwhelming Forces, Rush of Dread. That's kind of the huge payoff cards. And then you've got, um, in blue, we have Jailbreak Scheme as the best sort of removal there. Slickshot Lock Picker to recur Overwhelming Forces and Rush of Dread because that sounds absolutely ridiculous. And then in green, we have the Armadillo, Badlands Revival, Outcaster Trailblazer, Free Strider Commando, and Drover Grizzly. Commando is notably a lot better in the black build because anything that um, brings it into play without you actually paying for it, um, brings it in as a 5-5. Five, five. So if you use Badlands Revival, it'll just come in as a 5-5, five, five, which is sort of a nice nice benefit there. And then we have Tumbleweed Rising. Since we have a bunch of big creatures here, notably the Bonnie Paws and the Spinewoods Armadillo, um, Bristleback Sentry, Two Throw from the Saddles, Desperate Bloodseeker, Blood Hustler, Snakeskin Veil, and Primal Might. And then, so for this build here, we have basically six pieces of removal, two of which are half to full board wipes and then we've got rattleback apothecary to kind of like sort of trade with something in a pinch as a death touch creature and then lock bicker to recur some removal so this is sort of uh, the first build that has really good mana we have between all of the sort of mirage mesas and conduit pylons we functionally have uh, 10 sources of grain just from the lands and then deputy brings it to 11. Um, for black, we have 11 sources just from the lands, and then 12 from Deputy, um, 13 from Trailblazer, and 14 from Armadillo. Part of the reason I have a heavy push for black is we really want to be able to Rush of Dread on turn four if we have to for the double black. And the mana is just so good that I kind of prioritize black a little bit more than green since green really only has a single cost here except for the armadillo on six. And then for islands, or for blue, we have three sources here and then another five, so this brings it up to eight, nine with deputy, uh, 
10 with Outcaster Trailblazer and 11 with Spinewoods Armadillo. So we have just very good mana. Um, it is a little bit slow and this particular build is running 18 lands partially because we have such a crazy top end here with double Bonnie Paul and Overwhelming Forces. Also, if you do want to do Rush of Dread with all the bells and whistles, it does cost eight mana. So it's a very mana hungry deck and we don't have any real, um, you know, we have plenty of fixing, but we don't have uh, mana acceleration really. The one possible card that you could run here is Gold Pan. Um, part of the reason that I didn't and I ran Silver Deputy over it is because we're kind of low on creatures. This deck has 13 creatures um, with the Deputy and then 14 if you consider Tumbleweed Rising. And I kind of want to keep the creature count at least somewhat decent. Okay, for the second build we have, for the second sealed pool, this is a four color deck um, with everything except black. And I also thought this was very exciting. So part of the reason I'm doing four color instead of a three color deck is because we've got such good mana with the abraded bluffs and, and inspiring vantage. So running red and white kind of at the same time was about as easy <coughs> Excuse me, um, as just running one of them. So this is a four color deck. It's a bit lower to the ground. We don't have like the eight mana cards. Um, we do have a lot of really good removal. We have Primal Might, Journey to Nowhere, Legion Extruder, um, Double Throw from the Saddle, Savage Smash, and then Annie joins up, Trick Shot, Terror of the Peaks, which itself provides removal just by playing other creatures. So we have, you know, a whole bunch of removal here just in all these cards. I think the, the total count here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So kind of like nine removal with the Terror of the Peaks included. Um, this also is really good. It, it has a lot of kind of cares about four power creatures and you have the Cactus Folk Sure Shot, which gives all of this stuff haste, which is really nice. Um, between like the Drover Grizzly, the Trailblazer, like you draw cards for all of these four power creatures and above. So this is kind of the more proactive of the two decks. And I think that it's a little bit more my play style just because, you know, instead of sitting back and trying to survive for like a big board wipe, this is kind of more just get in and kill them. Um, but I think that both decks are very, very powerful. And for the mana fixing here, we've again got great mana. We have for white sources, um, eight white sources just from the lands, and then nine with deputy, 10 with trailblazer, 11 with armadillo. So 11 sources of white functionally. Um, for blue, we have seven, eight, nine, 10 sources. For red, we've got um, what is that? 9, 10, 11, 12 sources. And then green here, we're at um, 11 sources. So really good mana. Um, again, we don't have any acceleration here because I'm not running the gold pan, but we just have a lot of fixing. So, you know, kind of between these two decks, I'm not really sure which one is better. I would love to know in the comments what you guys think. Notably, a lot of the removal in this version uh, does have kind of fight spells. You've got Primal Might, Double Throw from the Saddle, and Savage Smash. This deck also has 13 creatures and 14 if you consider the Tumbleweed Rising. So the creature count is the same. I think the creature quality in this version is quite a bit better since we've got like Terror of the Peaks involved, Cactus Sure Shot, um, Prickly Pear. Uh, Discerning Peddler is okay, but it's mostly there for the card draw. So, you know, I think that the, the creatures are a little better in this version, um, but if we go back to the first sealed pool here, you know, you have kind of more backbreaking bombs in terms of Rush of Dread and Overwhelming Forces. So I think with this build, you're kind of more sort of set up to try to just bide your time, you know, kind of um, be a bit more defensive, and then after they overextend, just blow them out with Overwhelming Forces and just draw a billion cards and just win from there with Bonnie Paul or something like that. Um, so yeah, I think that the threats here, you know, again, like you've got, you know, these are certainly decent creatures like Desperate Bloodseeker, Blood Hustler, 
Rattleback, Apothecary, and Rictus Robber. And you have a bit more recursion here in Badlands Revival. So I don't know which deck is better, honestly. Um, I think that, you know, the Sultai deck is kind of more go big, do crazy stuff with like Lockpicker to like recur Rush of Dread. Um, and then the four color version here is more just kind of aggro bash face you know targeted removal so i think that there's there's value in both of them i don't actually know which one i think is better i, I think you know the other thing about that's fun with the um four color version is fortune loyal steed is really really good in this in this deck you've got all kinds of ways to do all kinds of nonsense like it works with peddler it works with prickly pear it works with any four power creature if you've got trailblazer in play it works with deputy if you need more land it works with um, um i guess if they decide if they kill your your bow token you can recur it here with bonnie paul and fortune which is kind of hilarious so there's a lot of sort of interplay with some of these cards uh, Legion Extruder has a nice combination there with Silver Deputy by giving it a bit more value so you can sack it to make a 3-3. So, you know, it has a lot of like little interactions here in this deck, which I think is worth noting. Also, hilariously, Annie joins up, aside from doing 5 damage, uh, works with Fortune as well as Bonnie Paul. And so if you have Bonnie Paul in play and you're attacking, you'll be drawing two cards instead of just the one um, since it does double the triggers. Unfortunately, Bonnie Paul's uh, bow token is legendary, so you can't have two ox tokens. That would be hilarious. But um, yeah, it, it, it you know, this is, there's a lot of like cool stuff here kind of going on. This is kind of more small ball. And then the first pool is kind of more like big time, just like kill all of your stuff and, you know, draw a billion cards. So I'd love to know in the comments which one you guys think I should play. But I think I'm probably, it's sort of more my play style to play the four color deck. So might start with that. And we will see you here in the games. All right, here goes round one. This We're going again with the second sealed pool for the build. It's just the one I feel a little bit more comfortable with, but I certainly, you know, could be wrong in running this one. But I'm typically more of a proactive player as opposed to sort of like a sit back control player. So this one feels a little bit more my cup of tea. All right, opening hand looks, yeah. It's got all kinds of land. We, we have, I think all four colors. So happy about that. It's, it's a little bit slow, but hopefully we can draw into some good stuff here. All right, so we've got double red. We have, I guess, one green so far. Uh, we don't have to make a decision necessarily yet on this. Um, probably want it to be blue, to be honest, just for Bonnie Paul. So I think we can probably get into more green. So yeah, I guess let's start with this is blue. Okay, there's another blue source. And yeah, no reason to go and find more. We've got plenty of land in hand, so I think we're just gonna sit with this. Definitely will need to draw something sometime soon here. Yeah, Silver Deputy makes a lot of sense if you're multicolor. Okay, there's another green source. So we have all of the mana in the world now. Gonna need a little bit of action here pretty soon though. All right, so I guess let's lead out here with Peddler. Actually, we can play around Counterspell by playing probably the Plains. Um, 
It's kind of funny though, because we want all of this land. We want double red, double blue, and double green. <laughs> so that's all right. Well, we'll lead out with Peddler here. Um, I think that the green is probably more replaceable, but actually, since we don't have Terror in our hand, let's maybe pitch the, the mountain here. We can always use Armadillo to go find it if we draw into it. And if this walks into a counter, we're okay with that. <coughs> There is a Rattle Worm. Now, notably, they're holding up Snakeskin Veil mana, so it's entirely possible they've got that. Um, I guess let's just go for Pylons here. We could Primal Might, and I guess we could fight it. All right, let's... Legion Extruder, do we want that? Two damage any target. Yeah, I mean, it's good to take care of their Key Keepers. I kind of like leaving that on top. All right, so now if we Primal Might, we can give this thing plus four, plus four, make it a seven, seven. It'll fight that. We don't really get to push, though. Um, I guess we could make... I think it's still worth trying for. If they've got the snakeskin, they've got it. And we could trade with like their silver deputy, but that doesn't seem great. So I think I'm just gonna attack with Peddler here. Okay, I'm surprised that they made that trade, but do they have another rattle worm? Oh no, they've got it in the um This is its ability from the graveyard. Okay, giant beaver. <clears throat> Alright, well now we can play out our forest and play the armadillo. And then next turn we can Tumbleweed Rising to make a 7-7, seven, seven, which feels pretty good. So we've seen Key Keeper, Rattle Worm. Beaver. Ooh, Mystical Tether is good. Ooh, and Bonnie Paul is pretty good too, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Feels good. <clears throat> okay, Bonnie Paul down. Wow, and another mystical tether. They are firing on all cylinders here. I really thought we would have had them by now, but mystical tether times two and throw from the saddle. <clears throat> now we can use Legion Excruder plus throw from the saddle to kill their beaver. All right, let's do that. And then we can make a copy of our 4-4. Four, four.
So we can keep attacking after this turn. Man, talk about haymakers this game. Good lord. Okay, that's a nice one. <clears throat> This way they've got removal for our 4-4, four, four. we can still attack with our sentry. Okay, town folk. And more action. And he joins up is really nice. Now we've got force blocks. And hopefully that should do it. Yep, nice. Okay, so we saw, what did we see? Vengeful town folk. Key keeper. Rattle worm. Beaver, throw from the saddle. And then two mystical tethers. And they are Bant colors. All right, do we have any sideboard stuff we want to bring in? Um, maybe if we have enchantment removal. What have we got? I guess, I mean, Boombox can get... No, it's artifacts. Never mind. So, yeah, I think that we're pretty well set. I think we just fight through them, maybe. <laughs> yep, I like our deck as is. Those are some crazy haymakers, game one, though. Wow. Uh, we need more land, so let's mulligan this hand, unfortunately. Okay, that'll work. Um, I think we probably throw back the peddler here, and then we just use armadillo to go ahead and get blue. Yeah, I think we, well, let's see, we've, we've got four land, so we could theoretically just try to play Armadillo on curb, but we really want Bonnie Paul, so I think we're going to go for, we don't have a three drop, so we can wait to play this on three and then just go and get an island. <coughs> hmm. Do we want pylons? Um, no, because we've got all four colors now. So let's just get a natural island here. And this turn we just play bluffs.
All right, let's get island down in case we draw into another island. And then let's get our tycoon going. Okay, there's the rattle worm. All right, so we can I guess we could sack a token and savage smash here. Um, if we primal might, actually, yeah, I think we need to. All right, let's pump, sack the token to give this thing indestructible, and then savage smash. Uh, otherwise, I guess we could just trick shot here. I mean, that works too. Preserves our token, which I kind of like. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that and then just keep the token going. Now this thing almost certainly blocks, but we might as well try to attack here. Fortune is interesting. We can start making more tokens, which is kind of cool. So I guess let's start. So we can actually kill both of their creatures here. I guess let's start with Savage smashing their Stable Master just to shut down their mana. Actually, I guess we can attack first just to get the damage in. Well... Just, it'll be bigger with Savage Smash. Hmm. Yeah, I guess let's Savage Smash to start. Actually, let's Pump to start. All right, so they can make it hexproof. We could primal might here and take out the haunting. I think I'd rather just play fortune though. Since we can make it uh, indestructible. Yeah, they're going to force us to make this indestructible, and that's fine. There's pylons. Now we can play Bonnie Paul. Now, if we think that they might have counterspell mana up, we can do something else. I think I might want to wait to see if Bonnie Paul resolves here. Maybe we maybe we wait a turn on Bonnie Paul just so they don't have mana up. Um, what we could do this turn is Fortune. I suppose we could Primal Might kill their. Yeah, like if they don't have the counter here, like it's so good if we just resolve Bonnie Paul though. All right, so can we play Fortune and also Primal Might? Let's start here with Conduit Pylons. Oh, 
Okay, that's a good one. I think I just want to go for the Bonnie Paul play. Like, if they've got the counter, they've got it, and it sucks. But it's so awesome if they don't. Now I'm happy to trade with... Uh, oh, God, I forgot the Bonnie Paul's abilities. This is so absolutely silly. Okay. Yeah, they can eat my eat my guy there. All right. Now we can go for Trailblazer, gain some mana, kill their key keeper, since that can tap down our 7-7. Seven, seven. Does this give us trample? No. Actually, I guess we can play fortune and then use throw from the saddle on that. Do we have enough mana for all this? I think we do if we start with Trailblazer. All right, let's add a white. Yeah, and then we'll have enough mana for all of this nonsense. Okay, let's get those out of here. Now we can throw from the saddle. Take out the key keeper. And start bashing. And if they tap out and like let stuff through, we can present lethal next turn. Okay, I guess let's just start with Grizzly. We'll get a card here off of the Trailblazer. And that'll kind of give us some more options. Um, yeah, they're just dead. <laughs> They get it too. Cool. Wanna know? This deck is sweet. <laughs> this deck is. Oh, I'm so happy I watched Paula Vitor's video. Like, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's worth its weight in gold. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back for the next round. All right, we're back for round two. Yeah, we've got uh, all four colors. Looks great. Stuff to do on turn three. <laughs> Probably start here with a braided bluffs. Man, what a what a match last match though. Just haymaker after haymaker. Oh, they stuck on land. Um, let's just run out. Do we want to do pylon here? I don't think so. Let's just go for forest. Uh, 
Okay, now we can probably go Pylon and then go for... Probably Drover Grizzly. I mean, if they don't have creatures coming... Ooh, Tumbleweed Rising is a good one, actually. Let's keep that. And then... Uh, lead out here with Grizzly. I guess Prickly Prayer... Prickly Pear is one less damage, but if they have something we can attack into, we won't necessarily have to waste removal. And, yeah, I think maybe I'll lead out with Prickly Pear here instead, actually. That way we can keep, like, developing our board. Now we can just lead out with Grizzly and keep pushing in. I don't think there's any uh, instant speed two mana thing here, so we can just attack in. And then if they play something, we could Savage Smash and then Tumbleweed Rising to make like a large power creature. All right, let's just go for another pylons here, I guess. That's a good one. I mean, <clears throat> I don't think I'd throw that away. All right, I guess let's pump the grizzly and then make a copy of it. I guess if they have removal, they can have it just be a 2-2 two -two instead. But yeah, that feels pretty good. Yeah, that's going to do it for game one. So we literally only saw blue-green colors. And I don't think we even saw a single spell. Yeah, let's just run it back. <clears throat> Opening hand looks great. Can go inspiring vantage here on one. Probably forced on two. I guess we could go for pylons here, but I kind of want to get uh, forests going. I guess we could always play it on three. It's not a super huge deal. Annie joins up is pretty good. It's nice removal. I think we'll keep that. Uh, it does make the deputy a bit worse. I guess we can filter for one blue right now. So we could just not play deputy, but I think playing deputy is fine. We could always use armadillo later if we want to search for land. Yeah, we'll just decline here. little bit of a slow draw but we've got lots of land so we could actually just deputy itself and then throw from the saddle to kill the uh, Vraska I think that's actually a good use of our mana here
<clears throat> Alright, let's lead out here with a mountain. And we'll get Tycoon going. We could use Annie Joins Up, but I don't know if it's worth killing this thing with that. We want to save it for potential bigger creature and then also just kind of develop our board. <clears throat> so it looks like they've got trash the town. That would be <clears throat> what makes the most sense here. Plus two, plus two, and then draw some cards if they get through. So if they want to, like, I guess spend their whole turn doing that, we could probably let them ha have it. They probably want us to, like, double block here and then get through and, and do that. So I think we either triple block to stop them from uh, drawing cards, and then we would be left with, like, a 1-1 one, one for their whole turn. Um, or we, I think we just like take it here actually, because then we can kind of keep pushing and yeah, I think we just let this through. Okay, it's just gold rush. That's fine. So we don't actually have a double green for next turn. We could plot the trailblazer and have that come in next turn and then make sure we have enough green for armadillo. I kind of like that play. And then we could just uh, push in with Tycoon here. I guess we could also sit back because they're representing five damage. So we can kind of slow it down a little bit. Otherwise, we're just trading five for five, and that's okay, but I think I'd rather be maybe a little bit more in control. So let's just go ahead and plot this. Just kind of slow the game down a little bit here. Ooh, Bristly Bell, okay. Definitely a bomb. That's a nice combo, Entertainer plus Bristly Bell. So I think next turn we just Annie joins up to kill this thing. Yeah. And we've got the extra two mana covered for any kind of counterspell nonsense. So yeah, let's just go for Annie joins up here. We could play out um, Trailblazer now that we'll have uh, enough mana for Spinewood's Armadillo next turn. So I guess there's, there's um, we might as well play this. They could have like Desert's Dew or something, but I think getting it on the field seems okay. We don't really need the extra mana. And then I think we can now start pushing a little bit. I guess we were still trading like we'd be trading six for for five and they ideally want to use this so it's really only trading six for three so i think now we can start pushing
And here we're happy to trade it for a token. I guess they could use removal also. Um, They've got Braska, Bristly Bill. Beast Bond Outcaster. And Raucous Entertainer. Try to take notes here for what cards I'm seeing for the next next game. Plan the heist. Oh nice. Okay, so now we can play Armadillo. Um, yeah, let's get our Armadillo here. And then I think, yeah, we just wanna push in. We're happy trading at Trailblazer for their entertainer. Guess we'd rather have them block Tycoon so we can do it this way. What else did we see? Gold Rush. And they're playing Sultai Colors. Gigapede is good. Ooh, Snakeskin Veil is nice too. We'll hold an island just in case they've got discard. Gigapede. Tumbleweed Rising. All right. Surprised they didn't just use it to make a 6-6 six -six there. Yeah, that was a mistake. So they have force blocks on the armadillo, so we could just push through with the rest of them here. Um, I guess they could have like the vampire, so might as well pump the sentry. Yeah, we can snakeskin veil that. Um, do we want to? Like they'll have two doubles, they'll have two six sixes next turn. So they just play double gigapede, um, kill our deputy. I don't know that we actually care they probably want to like shrink one of our other creatures. I guess we're pushing we're pushing them down to 2 here. Is that worth it? I don't think we actually care.
now we could snakeskin veil that again do we care so they have two six sixes trade for armadillo I don't think we actually care. Yeah, unfortunately not drawing anything here. So the nice thing here is we could get the double block, make this an 8-8 and kill both of them. Um, only problem is, is then we don't really have anything to do after that. So I feel like we actually just kind of sit here for a little bit, even though it doesn't feel great. And keeping two land up in case they have like the discard two. So we've got four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven lands. <laughs> so only six more in the deck. Uh, yeah, we think we just sit. And there's one of them. Uh, we have double blue. Yeah, I guess I'll just make another blue here. Five more lands left in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lazav, what does he do? That's kind of cool. Trick shot is pretty good. Does that open the way? Yeah, I guess it doesn't really, I mean, we could use it to kill their 6-6, six, six, but Like, we can't fight past Lazav. <laughs> I mean, if we used to kill, to kill the 6-6, six, six, they'd have to, like, triple block. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's pretty good, like, if they triple block. Or no, they can't triple block. Never mind. This actually is great. Okay, they had their own snakeskin veil, rough.
all right we can let him pay for that and then good snakeskin veil it's too bad we can't like let the fight happen and then win on the but we have to uh use our own snakeskin veil there I think we just want to block with sentry here. I don't know what kind of tricks they've got. Primal Might is pretty good. So we could force blocks for sure. I guess if we Primal Might the sentry and use that to kill their 7-7... Seven, seven, We can we'll save two mana to make sure that they don't have a counter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Give it plus eight plus eight. Make it an eleven eleven. You can even give it plus six plus six in case they have like double counter, like play around two counters. Give it plus six plus six and have it fight this thing. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, they have Betrayal of the Vault. All right. Sure. Oh, wow. Death Touch. Oh, that's a beating. Whew. Okay. All right, so Betrayal of the Vault. That was a total blowout. Forsaken Miner. Decisive Denial. And Snakeskin Veil. What else do we see? Tumbleweed Rising. And this town ain't big enough. All right, so, wow. Quite a few tricks there. Oh, and Lazav also. Lazav. Anything we want to bring in here? I don't really think so. I think our deck is pretty well set up.
Yep. Yeah, that Betrayal Devault was... With the Lazav getting the Vraska. <laughs> oh, man. I think we want to play our, our, our mana is pretty good. Yeah. I think let's lead out here with pylons. Can filter for green, but we do want to find an actual green source. Ooh, Tycoon is really good though. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. <clears throat> So Servant of the Stinger, they can go get Bristly Bill, probably. Is it worth journeying to nowhere? I mean, we've got the removal for whatever they find, so I kind of would rather like make them go get it. It's an interesting sort of quandary there. I think let's just play the trailblazer oh you know what we should have played it next turn that's okay i suppose this way we can attack with it theoretically yeah i guess not plotting it there and that also gave him a target. Ah, that was that was not the best. Maybe we should have plotted it and then set up for Tycoon. Yeah, that wasn't great. Okay, let's uh, let's rally back here though. Plan the heist, sure. We want to go for conduit pylons here. Oh, Terror of the Peaks is really good. Hey, they didn't play Plan the Heist. Interesting. I think we want to play this with Snakeskin Veil up, if at all possible. Unless they, like, tap out. Uh, even if they tap out. Town ain't big enough. Okay, now we can snakes can veil. Or we just let it happen and then play Terror of the Peaks. But then if they have removal, it's just like, eh, I think we just replay it, honestly. I guess if we play snakes can veil, this becomes a six power and it puts a lot of pressure on them. 
Yeah, I guess actually... Hmm. This is interesting. Drop him down to nine. I think we just replay it, we let it happen. Okay, no Vraska. Oh, he does have the Servant of the Stinger, though. He can punch stuff as a Death Toucher. So I think we just Savage Smash this thing. If he has his own... Um, Snakeskin Veil, he can do that, but he can't turn it into anything except for, I suppose, the Death Toucher there. We can always make this thing indestructible, though. And since we didn't draw land, like, I kind of don't want to play Terror of the Peaks until I have Snakeskin Veil ready. He had the snakeskin veil ready. Sure. All right, so he wants to... First, let's let this part resolve. And now he wants to fight it, so now we can just sack this guy. I guess it'll be a 3-6, so... Getting closer to having the land ready. Now I think we just journey to nowhere his Lazav. We don't want any kind of betrayal of the vault nonsense. I suppose we can just attack through it right now. Um, hmm. Like, we can Journey to Nowhere plus Throw from the Saddle is pretty good. And do we have enough for Snakeskin Veil also? I think we do.
Okay, we have enough to hold up Snakeskin Veil. And then we'll hold the forest so in case he has any kind of discard stuff. Um, I think we're okay trading our Prosperous Tycoon here. And then just leaving an open board for Terror of the Peaks. I guess it's slightly better if we don't trade, actually. This way we could potentially just like kill his guy if we draw a creature. I think we just let that through. And that'll do it. Got there. Yeah, Betrayal of the Vault came down to sort of the, uh, I'm so glad we held that snakeskin veil. That thing was worth its weight in gold. Man, what a banger, what a banger match. Whew. All right, two and oh, still in it to win it. All right, let's uh, take a little break and we'll see you back for round three. All right, we are back for round three. Man, what an incredible match, last one. Whew. All right, opening hand. Uh, I don't like it. Um, don't like it. I think we want to throw this back. We don't have any fixing. I don't like having to mulligan, but I think this is one where you probably should mulligan. Yeah, this is a lot better. Question is, do we want to throw back a mountain here or the snakeskin veil? I mean, veil is good. We don't have anything for it to kind of go with yet, and we do want to definitely develop a bunch of lands. Our deck is pretty expensive. I mean, Veil is really good. Maybe throw back a mountain, I guess. But like, we do want double mountain also. Yeah, I guess I'll throw back a mountain here. Veil is pretty good. All right, let's lead out probably with blue here. Now we probably go Peddler, maybe throw a Forest. I guess we could also lose the Sentry here. I mean, the Sentry isn't amazing. Seems like the most replaceable card, actually. Kenny joins up is nice. Uh, we probably just want Peddler to block the Plunderer. So I think we just go Pylons here. Keep searching. Ooh, that's a good one. We won't be able to play it on time, but I think that's okay. 
I guess we could also have thrown from the saddle to kill the duelist. Maybe we should have done that there. Yeah, actually, in hindsight, that might have been worth it. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, I think that would have been much better because now we don't have a play. <sighs> if we play Advantage, then next turn we can play Terror of the Peaks with Snakeskin Veil backup. But I think we need to play Annie Joins up this turn to not just lose the game. Um, question is, do we want to kill Duelist or Lazav? Probably Lazav because it grows. I mean, this Canyon Crab can actually push for a lot of damage, though. Like, if they just straight push for damage, they've got four, six, seven. We take like four this way. I think this Canyon Crab potentially could just be too much damage for us though. Okay, that's nice. Now we can play Terror from the Peaks. We won't have Snakeskin Veil back up, unfortunately. But I think we just got to get it into play. Yeah, we should have used that throw from the saddle way earlier. I don't know, maybe it would have been better to kill Lazav. Yeah, I don't like the bad manners good game there. That's it's not my favorite. Um, I don't know. It, some It's probably fine. It, it, I think that some people are of the opinion that you, you only say good game if you're the one who's about to lose, but eh, I can see it both ways. Um, all right, what do we bring in? Okay, shoot the sheriff. Lively dirge. Vault plunder. Canyon crab. Ted Lazav, Buzzard, Duelist, and Spring Splasher. And they are Salt High. Okay. So they've just got the shoot the sheriff here as the one trick that we saw. I don't think we really want to make any changes here. I'm pretty happy with our deck. But yeah, looking back on that, we should have used more of our removal quicker. They just kind of got an aggro lead on the game. Yeah, this hand I will keep. We've got some early interaction. We do want to definitely get some more land, but I think I'm happy to keep this.
Okay, that's a nice pickup. Um, I don't think we really care about the Spring Splasher, so there's no reason to play. I guess we could throw from the saddle, but that, that, that doesn't give us a counter, so that doesn't really help us. I think we just sit. We just don't care about this. That one we will kill. Um, Savage Smash gets it done. Sure Shot is really good. Um, we could also Legion Extruder to push. Or never mind, we, we can't push yet. So yeah, we'll just play Sure Shot. And then I think we don't want to make this trade since we've got Legion Extruder for that. So I think we just sit. Any joins up is nice. We need some mana fixing to get going. Um, guess we could Legion Extruder to take out the Plunderer. That doesn't really help us push through since they've got this Canyon Crab. We could, I suppose, throw from the saddle also. That actually is pretty good because then this is a 5-5 five five and they only have four power on blockers, that actually feels pretty good. Yeah, and we're happy to trade this for Drake. Fortune is pretty good, and then we can keep up Snakeskin. Yeah, I think we're happy trading four damage for two. Plus we're ahead on life. All right, so let's attack with our sure shot and then just see if they want to go for the double block. Pylons helps let us play Annie Joins Up. I think we want that over Outcaster. Uh, Outcaster is also good. I mean, Outcaster can just attack, though. I think we still want Annie Joins Up next. Since they could just block with Splasher on any on uh, the Outcaster. I 
don't think we care. I think we just attack in. And we'll leave that on top since we can play it with haste. So many spring splashers. I guess we might as well saddle this because um, then they can both be essentially untapped. I don't think they'll be attacking, but... Oh, you know what? Oh, I didn't even see it. We could have plotted this and then played. Actually, no, we don't have enough for Bonnie Paul next turn, even with it. I suppose we could have plotted it. This is fine. Actually, if we draw a land next turn, we can saddle it and then get the extra mana next turn and then have enough for Bonnie Paul. We could go Annie joins up here. Tumbleweed Rising is good too. I think, yeah, we just go for the Annie joins up just since they've only got one card in hand. And this puts them on a pretty good clock. Nice. All right, we saw a lot more stuff that game. We saw three Spring Splashers. Desert's Dew. And we saw the Buzzard, Geyser Drake. What else? Everything, oh, Nimble Brigand is, is a new one. And it looks like they're playing Jagged Barons. That might just be on the splash. So they're, we so far we know that they're Sultai. We've seen Sultai so far. It might just be like extra like damage lands. Could just be Demir with like the uh, damage lands. They've got a couple flyers. Um, we already have some reach creatures. I don't think we really have any big sideboard changes we want to make. Yeah, I think we're good with what we've got. Yeah, this hand looks great. All right, we've got red, white, green, and pylon. So let's name blue on this one. Um, I guess we can just go pylons here because next turn we're going to go prickly pear. Ooh, that's a good one. I don't think it's worth journeying to know we're at 2-1.
think we do trade the, the pair here with their splasher just to keep damage low as possible. All right, they're still stuck on land, so we want to kill that Duelist of the Mind ASAP. Um, so this is interesting. We could go for either Cactus, Sure Shot, Duelist of the Mind. If we get rid of it, we might be able to stall their land. I mean, Cactus Folk is pretty good, though. I think I just want to go Cactus Folk here. Plus, this also blocks... All right, that's good news for us. Now we can go for pylons and still play Tycoon. Feels pretty good. Deputy, we don't want Deputy now, I think. I guess, uh, what do we do next turn? We might actually want Deputy to make sure we have, because we need like functionally seven land to play these guys. So hilariously, I think we actually keep Deputy. That's really funny. All right, now with Cactus Folk Sure Shot, let's see, we could give this thing haste. We don't really want to attack into Spring Splashers though, so we'll just go ahead and pump our Cactus Folk. And I think we just attack here with Cactus Folk. I guess they could get in for some damage if we do this. So maybe we just hold. Because like they could like functionally trade with our tycoon yeah i think we actually don't attack here we just uh slow it down a little bit Now we can deputy, we can safely attack with Tycoon since we've got these tokens to sack, keep our Cactus Folk back, and then we've got Journey for any kind of stuff they have. I guess we could Journey something. We, if we Journey one of their, their Plunderer, we probably just want to Journey their Duelist, to be honest. So that's what's helping them draw out of this. I kind of like keeping Journey. We don't really need it. And the trample's super nice. All right, so let's play our deputy. Do we want journey or not? I think we maybe hold it just in case they have some crazy bomb. And then we want, I think, natural island on top. I don't think it actually matters, but island works. I guess if we play Journey here, they probably are just dead. Like, they probably can't draw out of it. We're at 15. They could theoretically do something crazy. Um, I think I'm just going to get rid of their Duelist. 
Actually, if we get rid of Plunder, we can attack more easily. I think just as a tempo play here, I'm just going to get rid of their Plunderer. All right, now we can play Bonnie Paul. Give it haste. It's going to be completely out of hand. Oh my god, this is so ridiculous. Whew. Yeah, that's it's it's just over time. <laughs> All right, got there. Whew. Kind of a uh, a rough start in that match, but uh pulled it out with some silly bombs. 3 and 0. Oh. Final boss next next round. Take a quick break and we'll be back for the final round. Okay, guys, we are back for the final round. All right, yeah, opening hand looks good. We've got a little bit land heavy here, but I mean, we have all of our colors, which I, I really don't want to turn down. And prickly pear on three, a little bit of removal. We're going to try it. So we'll open here with abraded bluffs. Nice uh, sentry on two. And this is nice too because prickly pear lets. Uh, Bristleback Sentry attack, which is great. Or eventually it will. Oko, oh god, turn three Oko. Whew, that's a beating. Um... Primal Might doesn't get there. Oh, this is going to be hard. Um, wow. I think we go for the Prickly Pair, throw the Saddle, Primal Might play. I mean, with Primal Might, we can get it down to one. But then there's no... You know, we're not for sure to be able to do it the next turn. I think we just got to play out the prickly pair and hope. Trick shot is good. I think we keep trick shot on top. Turn three Oko is beating though. Whew. Question is, what do they have to go with it? All right, plan the heist. We've got our window. Okay, so if we throw it from the saddle, <clears throat> kill that, that's four, that's seven, that's a dead Oko, that works for me. Um, I think we wanna save Prime White because it's better later. So I guess we just conduit pylons here. Yep, don't need a mountain. Whew, 
Oko down. Feels good. Okay. Okay, they're representing snakeskin veil mana. Hmm, I guess we could open. I mean, we can just offer the trade here with Sentry. I don't think we necessarily need to trick shot right now. I think getting more creatures into play feels pretty good. So I think we just offer the trade and then play Fortune. Savage Smash and Cactus Sure Shot are both really good. We can Primal Might next turn. Let's see, we have we'll have six mana next turn. I feel like Trick Shot's gonna be pretty good next turn. Also, I feel like we want the Cactus first, just in case we don't need to do any of that. Um, if we have Savage Smash, we could do that potentially and primal might in a single turn if they like play have like two creatures that's actually a pretty big game um sure shot's good too though because primal might lets us you know i think i'm just gonna go for the sure shot here i'm not sure which of these is right um Yeah, and we can't make our Bristle Pack Sentry big enough to survive the beaver right now, so we're just going to end it. Just in case developing is better, I think this we want to get more on the board. Uh-oh. Do they have, like, Trash the Town here? I think without mana up, I don't really want to walk into this trick. I feel like we just don't block here. So they're holding up two mana, so I feel like they've got either like Gold Rush. Probably Gold Rush. Okay, so given that, I think we probably trick shot this turn. They could also, actually, they're also representing, um, what is the uh, plus one, plus one indestructible lifelink thing? Whatever, I take up the shield. I feel like they might have take up the shield also. I think we just offer the 4-4 trade again, just play it super slow and just go Cactus Sure Shot. Um, I don't like getting Fortune in there. I mean, we could Primal Might and try to do that, but I feel like they've got nonsense. So I want to smoke it out. I feel like we just want to chip away until uh, we figure out what they've got. Yeah, I think I just want to develop the board a little bit. I'm playing it like super careful here. And I could go for the Primal Might play, but I think they've got something here. I think they either have like Gold Rush or Take Up the Shield. Okay, there's Bonnie Paul. <laughs> Whew. They've got one too. All right. Okay, now 
like if they have snakeskin veil, that's all they could have here. So I feel like we just double block. Like we're offering sure shot, but I think that's okay. So we could Primal Might, um, Primal Might for two, and then still have enough to Savage Smash. We could make this thing a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, it doesn't quite do it. I think we just want a Trick Shot. So let's kill Bonnie Paul. Actually, I guess the Ox gets bigger. Yeah, I feel like we gotta kill the ox now while it's in while it's in range. Oh god, they've got the snakeskin veil. No. I guess it wouldn't have worked either way. So now I think that the, the road might be clear for Primal Might. They have trash the town here. It's like super awkward. Um, are we in chump mode yet? We might be. So I think we block like this and then try to kill the 9-9 nine -nine next turn. Good God. We can't deal with that 9-9. Nine -nine. Guess we could block like this on Bonnie Paul, so it only gets one kill. But I feel like if they have a trick, they have like at least plus two, plus two. So I think I just want to make sure that this thing dies. Guess I'll give them the option. Trail of the Vault. Good God. Okay. Whew. All right. So they've got Betrayal. They have a turn three Oko. Betrayal, Bonnie Paul. They're doing it all. Still have no idea how we deal with that Ox token. Um, all right. Let's get the Deputy going. No. We primal might for three, it's still not enough. God. Yeah, we're just basically trying to see what rares they have now. Trail the Vault, Bonnie Paul, Oko, Beaver, Clear Shot. Wow, okay. All right, clear shot, betrayal. They have snakeskin veil. Yeah, their deck is as silly as ours is, that's for sure. Um, plan the heist.
and then Oasis Gardener. And they are, it looks like they're just three color. So they're just Bant. I think that's all we saw. Um, yep. Anything we bring in here? I don't think so. I guess the commando might be good. I mean, the commando, like, as a 5 5, just to, like, deal with some of their stuff. I feel like that's one potential card we could bring in is, is uh, commando. What do we cut, though? Prickly Pear is is at least not as appealing with all the insane nonsense they've got going on. It's, it's still very good. I think Commando might be a little better here. I mean, the worst card we have is Deputy, but that sets up our draws. Tycoon, I, I think I just maybe cut the Prickly Pear. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try that, see how it goes. Just having more fat, more big creatures. Okay, opening hand looks great. Open it up with bluffs. All right, and then we can go we want double red, yeah, we've got double red here, so we can just go for pylons on two. Grizzly is a very nice draw. Yep, fits right into the curve. Woo! Turn three Oko, both games. Okay. All right. Well, that's a throw from the saddle, so that's good. I think we want Cactus Sure Shot this turn. Guess we lead out with Island here. And then let's go Sure Shot and give this thing Trample. Is there any world where we want Tycoon? No, we give that thing Haste next turn. Or we give Terror of the Peaks Haste. Yeah, it's even more, that's even funnier. If we go for Tycoon instead, we can saddle the Grizzly and give everything Trample in case they're like holding up nonsense. Just in case we're looking at like possible counterplay. Okay, they could have the Snakeskin Veil We've seen that. Don't have mana for clear shot. They potentially could have counter mana. Um, if we go for Tear of the Peaks though, and it lands, like it's really good. Because we've seen clear shot, they could have that. Yeah, I think it's probably Terror of the Peaks here. 
So I feel like if they've got Veil, like all of our threats just aren't as good. I think we go for it. They have an answer for it. What could they have? I guess they could have like the exile attacker in white. I think we just send this and hope it works. I um, guess we could also try to send Grizzly too. Yeah, I'm happy trading Grizzlies here. Go down. Oh, this is nice because this will trigger off both the token and the tycoon if it survives. It's a big if. They have Bonnie Paul mana though, so we got to get going. Oh, so they've got a fight spell. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it. They had to do it. We have our own bunny, Paul, but we don't have the mana. I think we just get Tycoon going and start bashing face. Any joins up is also pretty funny because it makes Bonnie Paul trigger twice. But I think this is the good tempo play here. Put them in lethal range. So now we could go for any joins up, but it fails to counterplay. Throw from the saddle. Actually, they don't have mana for counters, so that's fine. I guess if they have the, um, I think I'd rather do join from, uh, throw from the saddle because that guarantees we can play Bonnie Paul next turn since we're short one land. So I think we throw from the saddle, probably with the, the Tycoon. Actually, I guess the Sure Shot since it has Ward. Probably on the Grizzly just because this way they won't be able to block well. Now we've got force blocks. They can at least burn our turn here, but that's fine. All right, so what else did we see? Gem, light foot, yeah, they're dead. Okay, so let's look at the, we beat another turn three Oko, good God. All right, hard bristle bandit, bandit, um, drover grizzly. Play. 
plan the heist, and then gem light foot. Um, so yeah, the only you're just it's just betrayal of the vault, clear shot, and snakeskin veil for their tricks so far. Opening hand looks good. We've got mana. We don't have red mana, but everything else. Primal Might's a nice trick. Okay, Bristle Pack. We just want to play well let's see do we want we could go find a mountain i think we want to play sentry because next turn we can attack with it and then try to like trade sentries also we don't know which mana we need next probably mountain hmm that's an interesting turn actually i think we can get a little bit aggressive, but we might run out of... I think I'm actually going to do the Deputy here, just to set up the uh, the land. Although, actually, nah, I'm going to go for the Grizzly, for the Bristle Pack, since we have two mana to come here. Because like, if they play like a, a Drover Grizzly themselves, they can start getting in and like pushing in. Yeah. Yep, super glad I played the uh, Sentry there. Okay, now we can go for pylons. Ooh, the Savage Smash is pretty good. Yeah, so I think we want... Let's keep that and then let's play Fortune. Then we'll take a hit from Grizzly and then we can use Savage Smash to kill the Grizzly. Otherwise, we could play like Grizzly and just trade them and just try to like race, slow the game down a little bit. Yeah, maybe it's better to not get fancy with Fortune yet and just um, just play the Grizzly here. Green blade is good. Now I'm kind of tempted to savage smash the green blade. <sighs> is that better? Than just playing out fortune i mean it's going to become a three four so potentially could get bigger than that they're tapped out next turn we can go like deputy plus fortune if we primal might for three actually this is i think that's a better play let's primal might for three we can kill the green blade and bash Oh, never mind. That doesn't work because they, they could still just block. Um, I'm just going to play Fortune here. I'm not sure. Ooh, those are both really good. All right, now we can go ahead and just get in. We're happy to trade with either one of these, I think.
This way we can use fortune to block the outcaster. So we're like ahead on the attacking race and we can use this, this won't be more than a three, four this turn. Plus Annie joins up is really nice. I think we do want to start killing some of their guys before they get to like Betrayal of the Vault mana. Ooh, Sterling Supplier is super good. Okay, that'll make Annie Joins up really good. Do we want to trade Fortune for the Grizzly? Probably not. Um, I mean, we are going to be taking some damage here in the air. I guess we can kill both things. But we are taking a big hit here. I think even though Fortune is really good, I actually just want to like slow down the tempo a little bit since we're going to... Um, be taking some time here and we've got some stuff coming so i think i'm just going to make this trade now we can play annie joins up kill their green blade and then offer the trade here although let's attack first i suppose Yeah, I just want to be like super cognizant of our life total here. So now I think we get Deputy going. Uh, we could also go Commando, but that's a little risky, taking damage in the air. I think we gotta slow that down. So we could Savage Smash, that prevents counter mana. <clears throat> and then go for the Silver Deputy afterwards. I think that's probably the play. Oh wait, no, that's gonna take four mana. So we Primal Might for two plus Deputy. Yeah, I think so. Now we offer the trade. <clears throat> I don't think we want to find any land. Like we're we're good with what we've got. Ooh, Bonnie Paul. Okay, we're in for a really tight game here. Oh, God. Oh, Bonnie Paul is so good. Whew. Okay, we've got our own, but we don't have the mana to play it. Need another blue source.
So we could, yeah, we can't tap. If we Savage Smash and Pump, we can kill the 7-7, seven, seven, but then they swing back and kill us for nine. So we have to kill the Bonnie Paul. If we use Dr Drover Grizzly to do that, we have to natural draw an island next turn to win. Yeah, I think that's the play. Man, Bonnie Paul. Whew, Bonnie Paul. The game looked really good. It's not over yet, but it's, it's we're in a rough spot for sure. Plan the heist, okay. Nope, it's not gonna work. Um, I guess we can chump for another turn here. And then go and find a blue source <laughs> and gain three life. I guess let's do that as a, um, wait, no, we can play it this turn. Yeah, let's do it now. Oh my God, this game. I guess it could be a Mesa. I don't think it matters for any purposes, but let's just get the island. Okay, we're still here. Stagecoach security, yep. It's a 10-10. I too have a body paw. <laughs> I don't think it matters, but uh sure. Trying to think what we could possibly use this mana for. I guess we just go red. Fortunately, we still have to chump. <laughs> I think we keep the Bonnie Paul because we have chances to draw stuff. Go to two. Unless they've got nonsense. Ooh, snakeskin veil. Yeah, it's probably gonna do it. Talk warlock. And lone shark. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, yeah, sure shot is not going to do it. Well, good game. Whew. Three and one. Didn't quite get there. Bonnie Paul is a beating all around. All right, well, it can't be unhappy about 6,000 gems. So, you know, we didn't quite get there, but had a hell of a time. I had an awesome run, and I think we built a great deck. So just looking over the deck one more time, I think this really ended up pretty sweet. And I, I do definitely recommend Paulo Vitor's video um, where he just emphasizes when you're building a sealed deck, you want to go for power, not necessarily consistency. In fact, you're, you're much more likely to spike a win if you do so because you've got all these insane threats flying around and 
just having removal and big scary bombs is kind of the, the name of the game. So we will see you next time, guys. And you guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Take care. Let's get our 6,000 gems. <laughs>